in his essay, The Last Messiah, Zapfe describes what appears to be the existential crisis of a primitive human being, a caveman maybe. Um, he does so very effectively. But as he stands before imminent death, he grasps its nature also, and the cosmic import of the step to come. His creative imagination constructs new, fearful prospects behind the curtain of death, and he sees that even there is no sanctuary found. And now he can discern the outline of his biological cosmic terms. He is the universe's helped, helpless captive, kept to fall into nameless possibilities. From this moment on, he is in a state of relentless panic. Such a feeling of cosmic panic is pivotal to every human mind. Indeed, the race appears destined to perish in so far as any effective preservation and continuation of life is ruled out when all the individual's attention and energy goes to endure or relay the catastrophic high tension within. The tragedy of a species becoming unfit for life by over-evolving one ability is not confined to humankind. I can't see uh, a better description, or I've never come across a better description of such a moment of existential horror as this one in uh, Zapfi's The Last Messiah. It's where you suddenly realize, my God, I'm stuck in this body. I'm, I am somehow separate from this body, but I'm stuck inside of it. I'm somehow separate from the universe, but I'm bound by it. I'm bound by the phenomenal universe, um, whether I like it or not, and something in me says I don't like it. Um, Sartre, in his Nausea, Nausea, describes it as a great sense of stomach-churning revulsion, this idea of being attached to flesh, being attached to the universe. It's just so nauseous that it's more disgusting than one can possibly come to terms with. Zapfi says, it's horror. Um, Stephen King, in his story, uh, short story, Sometimes They Come Back, describes it very interestingly. Um, a uh, spirit being overcome by a more powerful and more malignant spirit. The tone was right, but the expression on its face was one of horror. The expression of a puppet that has come to life only to find itself still on strings. <laughs> There's uh, an existential crisis for you. There's cosmic panic for you. I'm alive now, but I'm still on strings. <laughs> um, pretty good stuff. They're pretty uh, apt descriptions, I think. But Zapfi again stops short. I won't say that I've been through an existential crisis. I don't know if anyone can actually decide these sorts of things, whether or not they've been through it. But I, I've been through something that seemed an awful lot like that. <clears throat> I'm no longer in a state of cosmic panic. Um, and yet I'm still utterly fascinated by the phenomenal universe and why we're in it. Um, I won't say that I've found any answers that are of any use to anyone. The panic isn't there anymore. Uh, even the nausea is gone. Uh, I can understand both states. Um, Zapfi seems to imply that the horror of existence is so severe that it cannot be overcome. The only thing we can do is blot it from our minds. H.P. Uh, Lovecraft begins 
The Call of Cthulhu, his most famous work with uh, quote, I think it goes something like, the most merciful characteristic of the human mind is its inability to correlate all of its contents. In other words, if we were to a actually able to put everything together in, my mi in our minds, something that is the opposite of merciful would happen. In other words, something horrible would take place in our minds, and we might start running around in circles like Zapfi's caveman in a moment of cosmic panic. Um, Lovecraft deals with that, in, as Stephen King does, through science fiction. How do we deal with the fact that the universe is not something that we are fundamental to, or that we don't believe that we are fundamental to? Well, I think that it's, um, again, I hate to say this, but I do believe that it's an argument from ignorance to say that that fear cannot be overcome. Zapfi says, and in spite of what some people have objected, um, or have, an objection some people have raised, is that Zapfi isn't prescribing denial or sublimation or distraction or whatever. I believe he is. He prescribes just don't think about it. Take your mind off it. Because if you actually sit there and look at it, the true horror of existence will smash your mind to atoms. You'll just sit there in a paralyzed state of cosmic horror. Um, as I say, I, a lot of people have said, no, 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 he's not, he's not prescribing all of these distractions. He's just saying that's what we do. Well, I think that he is prescribing these things because he seems to offer a universe in which there's only two choices. <laughs> Cosmic horror or don't think about it and think of something else. Do something else. Take your mind off it all. Well, there's a third possibility. In fact, there's quite a few other possibilities. Stare right into the face of that horror and try to come to terms with it. Anything that you are fundamentally horrified by is something that you don't understand. If you understood it, you wouldn't be afraid of it. That's how horror works. Um, I'm not saying that horror is not something that, that one should be afraid of. <laughs> Interesting paradox there, or tautology. But I'm saying that horror itself can be overcome. We have nothing to fear but fear itself, etc., etc. If you refuse to deal with it, if you put it in the back of your mind, you just make it stronger and bigger and more relentless. Turn around and look at it. Study it. Understand it for what it is. The um, the, the idea of simply blotting it out of your mind, if you ask me, just makes it more powerful. Just just actually ramps up the, the horror. All you've done is you've locked it in the attic. <laughs> it's still there, all right. The other thing is, in uh, this essay, Zapfi says, we search for meaning because we are over-evolved. We have excess consciousness. And we don't know what to do with it. So we just essentially waste it. The paradox of yearnings that can never be satisfied. I've said that I believe that that's an argument from ignorance. Because how do we know that such yearnings can never be um, satisfied? He seems to imply that we look for um, meaning in a universe because that's inherent in us. We look for meaning in the universe because we are over-evolved. It is our fundamental nature to do this. All right. Rather than dispute that, I would ask Zapfi, is it possible to overcome your fundamental nature? And I would answer that with a resounding yes. And I think that Zapfi uh, would agree with me, actually. 
Um, strangely enough, he uh, prescribes antinatalism in the last uh, or the penultimate state uh, sentence of this essay. Know yourself, be infertile, and let the earth be silent after ye. In other words, don't breed. But isn't that also telling us to overcome our fundamental nature, our desire to breed? I don't care what uh, people say about this business of we don't have a desire to breed. We just have a desire to fuck. We've got a desire to breed, all right, and we spend an awful lot of time doing just that. Zapfi says we ought to overcome that desire. Fair enough. Why don't we overcome the desire for meaning in the universe out there? Maybe we can't find meaning in the universe, but we can actually deal with the fact, the flaw, that we have a desire for meaning in the universe out there. Or at least some people say that we can do so. That's overcoming our nature, isn't it? That's the very thing that Zapfi prescribes that we do when he says, leave the earth silent after ye. Don't breed anymore. If he wants us to overcome our nature, he assumes that we can overcome our nature. I, either that or he's just playing games with us, which I don't believe. Um, therefore, if it is in our nature to seek meaning in the universe out there, in the phenomenal universe, in the universe that causes us such cosmic panic, we can overcome that desire. Do we want meaning in the universe? Or do we just want meaning? <laughs> the two are not necessarily the same thing. Thank you.